When the Mac was first mentioned on stage at today's WWDC keynote, Apple went straight into announcing the Mac Pro and then the Pro XDR display. So by the time all of that was over, them mentioning Mac OS felt almost like an afterthought. But no worries, there's actually a lot to unpack in the new OS, which is called Mac OS Catalina. Now, as always, the OS is not going to arrive until the fall. So we're gonna hold off, of course, on doing a full review until everything arrives in its complete and final form. But for now, we're gonna focus on on three notable features. First up, Sidecar, which essentially allows you to use your iPad as a secondary display, sometimes with input, depending on whether you have an Apple Pencil on hand. Now, I'm gonna just run through a quick few use cases here because it might not be obvious why you need something like Sidecar. Um, but maybe you wanna be doodling in Illustrator, maybe you wanna be marking up a PDF that someone sent you for work purposes. It might feel more natural to do it on the iPad just because it's a smaller screen that feels more like a notebook. You're holding it at an incline. The Apple Pencil support might feel more intuitive to you. Um, but at the same time, you want the best of both worlds. You wanna be able to consult your main computer screen for things like messages, maybe emails that are coming through. This basically does not force you to do your work exclusively on an iPad, but it lets you do the things that are most convenient to do on an iPad, all while connected still to your main computer. You may remember that last year at WWDC, Apple said that it would be introducing an easy way for developers to bring their iOS apps to the Mac. And in fact, there were a handful of first party apps from last year's Mac OS Mojave that were built on this very technology, things like um, voice memos and Apple News for Mac. The news now is that third party developers are getting to take advantage of that same technology that makes it really easy to port over apps meant for a mobile device to the Mac. It's really important for developers that have a small shop and can't afford to just break out different developers onto an iPad team and an iPhone team and a Mac team. Some small shops really need everyone focused on just one platform and this gives them a really easy way of doing that. Last up, we have voice control, and it's worth noting that this is an accessibility feature, and this is the only time that I can remember anyway that Apple mentioned accessibility in its entire two hour and 15 minute-ish keynote that happened today. So it's really worth taking a deep dive into voice control and just hearing what it's all about. Now, what it allows you to do, what it allows someone to do, is someone with limited motor control or no motor control to control their entire machine, their entire OS using their voice. And it goes beyond just, hey Siri, which allows you to request fax or web queries, let's say. And it goes beyond voiceover, which reads information on the screen back to you. This is being able to launch apps with your voice, change settings with your voice, insert emoji with your voice. It is the most comprehensive use and control over the OS using voice that we have seen in the history of Mac OS, essentially. Again, it may have seemed that Mac OS was an afterthought today, just in the shadow of the new Mac Pro, the Pro XDR display, but there actually are a lot of new features and we're really looking forward to testing them more deeply, starting with the beta that comes out this summer and then the final release, which is gonna come out sometime on some unspecified date this fall. So stay tuned in Gadget. We're gonna have a deeper dive later this summer and a full review sometime after that.